Attention Kmart shoppers. I'm doing a tester on some photography for paintings. I'm trying it in the shade right now. So I got a little painting, a cute little painting, set up with my camera and I'm trying to get the color going. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's about how to take photos of your paintings without distortion and trying to get that true color. So your painting looks like your painting. I have the painting on a little easel. I have my camera on a little tripod and everything's little and pretty. It's nothing fancy, it's just against the house. But the big thing is it's out of the sun. It's on the north side of the house. So it's in shade, technically full sun and shade. So I would make a note of that. Since the painting is not perfectly straight up and down, my camera is not perfectly straight up and down. My camera is hopefully perpendicular to the painting. And what I mean by that is the lens of this camera. So if you look, see that lens, that lens right there? Yeah, that lens. That lens is hopefully perfectly perpendicular to the painting. Another thing I do is, here I am. Camera settings. The camera settings. I have it on a two second delay, so there's no shake. You don't want to shake because then you're gonna get a blurry painting photo. So I have it on a two second delay. So when I press that shutter button, it has about two seconds to stop shaking if there is any shake. Another thing I do is I play with the different types of white balance. I first try auto white balance, then I just go right down the line. So first it's auto, then it's sunlight, then it's cloudy, then it's shade, then tungsten. When I get the tungsten, it makes everything blue. And then after that, it's kind of like weird fluorescent stuff. So I know just the first four I usually go for. Everything kind of looks good in the camera, but when it's on a computer screen, it's a little bit different story. So that's what I'm playing with. And then I'm going to review the photos and see which ones are the more gooder. That was round one. Round two. I play with my ISO settings. The first time I did all of my shoots with ISO 100, then I plumped it up a little bit just to see. So I did like ISO 400. And I'm gonna review all of those and see what they look like. When you're taking pictures of a painting, another thing to look for is glare. You don't want glare on a painting because it shows up as white. Pure white, bleached out white, no detail white. And then you can't see the actual paint or the painting because it's white and it's bleached out and it's not there. So watch out for glare. So we're gonna review those on the computer, see which ones work the best, and then I'm going to record all of that. So then if I ever have to take photos of paintings outside and it's bright and sunny and I'm on the north side of the house in the shade, I should know exactly what to set my camera up to so I don't have to do this every single time. And this is just for outside. If I'm doing it inside and I'm controlling the light, it's the same routine, it's just settings are going to be a lot different because it's inside. It doesn't like inside. Inside has a lot of... It's dark inside. I come in after taking some photos and video for this YouTube and look who is on my table. Nimbus, who do you think you are? For I am the chosen one. Jerk cat. Hey everybody, so on my computer screen, I have all the photos I've taken. I've taken them in chunks of four. So I have these first four, and then I broke it up. I have number two here on my fingers because that tells me that I changed my settings. I have three on my fingers because for the next round, I changed my settings and my settings are very subtle. These first four, I had ISO 100. The next four, I changed my ISO to 125. And then after that, my ISO changed to 400. I was thinking I'd get a big color difference or a brightness difference and not really. So after looking at that, I just paid attention to these first four at ISO 100. When you blow them up, you can see they're each a different color because I have different white balances on them. So the first one is an auto white balanced. The second one is a sunny white balance. The next one is a cloudy white balance. The last one is a shady white balance. I did not do a tungsten white balance because 
If you've ever taken photos with tungsten, you'll find out it makes everything blue. It does have its purposes, but for this, not so much. So at looking at these photos, I can tell right away that this one, this one's too yellow. Looking at the rest of them, this one is too dark. So then I have these two. This one catches my eye right away because it's brighter. Uh, I'm not so sure about this one. The way I would really check, I would have to bring the painting down and compare it to this photo to see which one is the best. The one with auto white balance or the one with cloudy white balance. We have the painting and we have the actual photo and that is in the cloudy and I'm thinking that the cloudy one is spot on. And then after that I took some more photos because I got cocky. So if you notice instead of taking 12 photos I took two photos. So for this one this was a commission that Kara did and it's a portrait of the Dati. It looks very good very subtle difference in brightness and color but nothing too bad when we compared this to the painting it was spot on the only thing we screwed up on is just a little dark and then this line right here was not perfectly parallel so if I went like this you can see that I had a gap from there to there so my camera was not perfectly perpendicular to this painting. So there was some cropping that went on when we took a photo because I did not line it up. Then we tried the autumn photo and I took two photos of this, again, because I got too cocky. And when we compared it to the original painting, it's way too dark. So these didn't even work out. We had to find a new location to get some brighter sunlight. Not full sunlight, I think we waited until it was an overcast day and that helped out a lot. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned a little bit on how at least we take some photos of paintings and how we set it up. We are by no way the best at it and we are by no way the only one source on the internet. But at least that's how we do it. We get some very good results. And if you noticed, in the videos it was spring, but now it's winter. I've been sitting on these videos for quite a while and I finally got them done. In conclusion, have your setup, put it on a tripod, have it on a timer, get the lens perpendicular to the painting, or if you think of it and have a different frame, have the lens parallel with the surface of the painting, take several photos, play with your white balance, and then finally, the most important part, I would think, compare your photo with the original so you can get true color. Oh, and one last tip, one last tip. Uh, no, that was it, that was it. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I always say, yep, thanks for watching. Some bloopers at the end because I can't shut my mouth. Bye. Woo! This, this video has been going on for four months Woo! sorry for shaking the camera Woo! And there's airplanes Woo! four months Woo! i think i'm in focus it's hard but we'll, we'll try our best everybody we'll try our best Woo! so that's it for now i'll see you inside when i'm on a computer or you won't see but we, that's we'll we'll go yeah Woo! yeah Woo! what was i gonna say